Oh, The Office. My favorite comedy of all time and the single biggest reason I keep paying Netflix. Last video, I tried doing a comprehensive breakdown of all the series' plot holes. It was met with mixed reception. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. This time, it's my breakdown of who I think was the Scranton Strangler. The Scranton Strangler feels like a longtime member of the show, but he was never actually brought up until midway through season 6, in the episode where Jim and Pam have their baby. Let's go through every mention of the Scranton Strangler and build a timeline. Please, I wish he'd come after me. Oh, Scranton Strangler's in the house. You will get caught. They caught the Scranton Strangler. Oh, Scranton Strangler! We set out to capture the Scranton Strangler. And I'm not so sure he's guilty. Scranton Strangler 666. When I was on the jury, the Scranton Strangler. The Scranton Strangler. Blathering on about this Scranton Strangler. Go talk to the Strangler. The proud neck of justice, isn't that the expression? The Scranton Strangler is mentioned 14 times throughout the series. First mentioned in season 6 and book ended with his capture one season later. In between those events, Dwight makes a few obsessive comments about him. Later that season, Toby is called to be on the jury at his trial and later convicts him. Dwight makes a few more Strangler mentions. And then season 9 begins the Strangler saga with Toby so overwhelmed with guilt he confronts the Strangler. It's worth mentioning that the first time we hear of the Strangler, it's via a newspaper article which reads, Scranton Strangler Strikes Again. This means the Strangler had already existed in the community. And in season 5, Meredith says that one of her neighbors was murdered. Yeah, my neighbor got murdered. It's circumstantial evidence, but maybe the Strangler started in season 5. And now it's time for our first suspect, the man involved in five of the 14 Strangler mentions, Dwight K. Schrute. Dwight is an experienced killer of animals. Last Sunday I had to put down over 150 pets all by myself. He is martial arts trained, a little obsessed with the Strangler. But for all intents and purposes, he seems like a law-abiding citizen. Kind of like an over-eager HOA president. Can you imagine if I was deranged? Robert California is intense, powerful, and supremely creepy. He even has experience with strangulation and enjoys it. I feel like I'm being strangled, like I'm at some erotic asphyxiation sex club over on I-84, or the Red Room, say, or Dominic's. In fact, his own employees think he's a murderer. Uh, there's no way he hasn't strangled at least one stripper. And then there's this. But you're going to be surprised by how ugly it gets. You don't even know my real name. I'm the f Lizard King. Absolutely terrifying. He's mysterious, manipulative, and is sex crazed enough to check all the boxes. The only problem is, he showed up after the Strangler was arrested. Let's talk about Gabe. The Strangler was not mentioned until right after he arrived in town. You don't want to get on my bad side. I've seen some horrible things. Also, he loves the disturbing. It's the perfect blend of love and horror. On the downside, I don't have the lung capacity to blow a whistle. Oh my god. However, the frailty of Gabe may actually be a strangler characteristic. Check out this interview from Paul Lieberstein, aka Toby, aka one of the writers on the show. His, the one thing the strangler did was he strangled people but didn't kill them. He left them once they've been strangled and passed out. Is that true? Yes. I yes. didn't know that. Yeah, I'm not sure we ever got around to saying it. But that was always our thing. The Scranton Strangler didn't strangle you to death. So perhaps if he doesn't have the lung strength to blow a whistle, he doesn't have the hand strength to strangle. Also, it turns out that the Showtime serial killer Dexter uses saber printers. And where's Dexter from? The same place Gabe is from, Florida. The only reason for Dexter to use this fictional printer company would be to link itself to a character from The Office. And now for the man who's involved in half of all Strangler incidents, the internet's number one suspect, Toby Flenderson. The Toby theory has the strongest fan base and has been gaining momentum as of late. This is primarily due to the fact that Toby was the only one not there the day the Strangler was captured, and because the Strangler's car was apparently at Dunder Mifflin at some point in time. Now if Toby had been in the car, he would have got caught, but the theory is he was out framing a man for the crime. 
and Toby does have some experience thinking about framing. Sounds a lot like the premise of my latest Chad Flenderman novel, a murder for framing. Toby, nobody cares about your sex-crazed black detective. Toby was also absent from the hospital the day that Jim and Pam had their baby, and Toby being in love with Pam would have found that day particularly difficult. Toby publicly expressed misgivings and even personal guilt over the Strangler verdict, believing that an innocent man had been imprisoned. Coupled with a few disconcerting things he said, You are the silent killer. Go back to the annex. You'll see. Clark, get out of here. He suffered a debilitating neck injury, which is why perhaps he wants to inflict that same pain on others. And curiously, in the webisode Blackmail, Creed has some information on Toby so damning, he's the only one who refuses to stand up to him. In the end, Toby ended up getting strangled. We should have put a bow on the issue, but the theory is that Toby admitted that he's the actual strangler and George Howard Scubb so enraged, ironically, strangled him. Creed Bratton has the longest rap sheet by far. Buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy one! He steals pancakes, takes a company photo like it's a mugshot, steals poker chips, takes credit for someone else's wedding gift, sells office equipment for personal gain, doles out fake money, stole from a Chinese restaurant, involved in a number of cults. But you make more money as a leader. Expert on prescription drugs. Steals toys at a Christmas gift drive. Tries to feed a baby paper clips. Steals a bag of blood. I stopped carrying a long time ago. Runs a fake ID business. Immediately thinks he's in trouble when cops show up. Has no problem with flashing. If that's flashing, then lock me up. Gets coworker fired and steals her money. Admits he's been evil. What if you've been really, really bad, more evil than, than strictly wrong? Shows up to work with blood all over. I've done a lot more for a lot less. Created an alias to transfer debt to. William Charles Schneider. Faked his own death and sold drugs. And this amazing coffee of snort. Great heroin, though. Runs when Michael says there's been a murder. People kill Angela. There's no reason to judge them faked his death for tax reasons, and is collecting benefits. I wrote your obituary. Oh, oh, that's right. Hey, good work. Thank you very much, sir. But out of all the Cretisms, this is the most damning of all. Let's put these two things together. Nobody steals from Crete Brat and gets away with it. The last person to do this disappeared. His name? Creed Brat. Oh, yeah, I was in prison. That's where I got the name Creed. Let's rewind that. Creed was in prison, and that's where he got the name Creed. That's where I got the name Creed. So according to this, someone crossed Creed, and Creed made that person disappear. His name? Creed Brad. Confirmed Creed was in prison, killed a man, and took his name. Let's do this. So that's the case for each of the five prime suspects. Toby has the most evidence and has the closest connection to the Strangler. Robert California is the one who acts most like a Strangler. Creed is definitely some sort of criminal. And Dwight has the physical tools to do it. But I always felt like the show was leading up to Gabe being the guy. The weirdo outsider with a fetish for the occult. Maybe Greg Daniels thought that ending would be too dark. It's not very funny. Or maybe he did exactly what he said he'd do. Unmask the Scranton Strangler, George Howard Scubb. As producer David Rogers said, there are no questions left unanswered. But that's not as fun. 